Welcome to DIY Hair School and on today's video I am going to be showing you the process of having my hair dyed. It has been five weeks since I had my roots done. When you are a platinum blonde like me, getting your roots done often every three to six weeks is super important to get the correct amount of lift and to not get banding. I'm going to show you not only how much roots I have, but I'm going to show you how dark or not dark my roots are. My natural color actually resides in the dark blonde shades. You can see that my natural color sits right around a level seven, which is a pretty dark blonde, and I lift it up to a level 10. And that's partly why it's not actually that hard to get me super, super blonde. If your hair is darker, it means you have to go a lot higher before you're going to get really blonde. We use the Blonde Me Bleach by Schwarzkopf. It has nine levels of lift and it's great for on scalp application and 20 volume developer. I don't care how dark your hair is, you never need more than 20 volume developer, especially on scalp application. Even if your hair is super dark, 20 will get you there. You just have to wait a little longer. If you use a higher developer like a 30 or a 40, then your hair is more likely to get damaged because it doesn't actually make you lighter, it just makes you light faster. So going low and slow is always going to help preserve the integrity of your hair and leave your hair much healthier and shinier and happier at the end of your bleaching process, which is super important, especially when you're doing on scalp bleach and essentially bleaching your hair once a month. You want to make sure that you keep your hair as healthy as possible. I'm commonly asked if I do my hair myself, and the answer is no, I do not do my hair myself. Even though I am a professional and I do specialize in blonde hair, I don't care how good you are at it, nobody can apply an on-scalp bleach properly on themselves. There's just no way you can do the back of your head properly and not overlap onto your previously bleached hair. In order to have a successful bleach that doesn't create banding and does not cause any breakage, you need to take thin, even sections and not overlap any of the bleach onto the previous bleached hair. You want to be very meticulous, and this can be tricky because you're doing it on such a small amount of roots, half an inch or sometimes even less, but that's what helps you get that nice, clean, bright lift. And if you don't get up to a level 10 like me, then it doesn't matter how much of the toners that I use you put on your hair, they won't look the same. The toners that I'm gonna show you only look this color on my hair because we lift it to a level 10. If you lifted it to a nine or an eight and your hair is still very yellow or orange when you take the bleach off, then the toners that I'm going to show you, the toners that I use, aren't going to make your hair look the same color as mine. You need to get that super clean, super even, bright level 10 lift, or it's just not gonna happen. I never process my bleach with heat, but I do like to put a cap so that nothing dries out, and I always poke a hole for those ends so they don't sit in there with the bleach. I'm going to apologize in advance in the next few clips. I am chomping on my gum and it looks terrible, but obviously I'm not gonna go back and refilm these because that would be another month from now. So here we are just rinsing off the bleach. We rinse it thoroughly and then shampoo to make sure there is no bleach left in the hair whatsoever before I put on the toner. And I'm just going to give you a little shot of what my hair looks like before I even put toner on. And you can see just how light that lift is without even having toner. If your hair is not that light before you use toner, then the toners aren't going to look the same on your hair as they look on mine because the formula is only as good as its base. So the formula that I normally use to get my super white icy blonde is Matrix Color Sync SPA and 10P in equal parts. But today I'm doing something different. I'm using the 10P and the 10M in equal parts, which should give me a little bit more of a deposit. It's going to give me a bit more of a silvery beige instead of that bright white blonde. And you want to make sure that you get that toner absolutely everywhere, especially when you're switching tones and just make sure it is fully, fully, fully saturated. So here's the toner processing, and this is me freaking out a little bit because I'm afraid that my hair is going brown, even though logically I know that the toner is not going brown, but it still scares the crap out of me because I don't change my hair color very often. And even here, I'm literally freaking out at the color of my hair and regretting my choices. Um, it did turn out great, but I, at this point, I'm still regretting my choices, and my sink is absolutely filling up. I had to get my husband down to fix my plumbing after this because I had a pretty decent clog. 
Here is the finished product in a few different lights. So this is in the nice bright white light in my salon. You can see it's looking lovely, definitely feeling the results, even though I was scared when it was processing. Um, you can see in natural light, you can see those tones in the bathroom light. You definitely see a bit more of the golden tones coming through and you can see the depth of the color when I take it down here. Um, out of the clip, you're going to really see some of the depth that you get from the 10M. Adding the 10P, the pearl, keeps it a bit more silvery. The 10M is a mocha blonde and it's got a warmer base. I don't like to go too golden and warm and that's why I mix the two together. It kind of gives you this silvery beige instead of a golden beige and that's my preference. I don't like to go too warm with my blondes but that extra pigment turned out really nice and it's a lovely, lovely winter blonde. I'm digging it. Hope that helps.